Hi everyone, it's Bethany from Swell Publications here and I'm here to tell you about the 10 books that I read whilst I was in isolation. In my job I was placed on stand down for two months and during that time I got to enjoy some reading which I've not been able to enjoy that depth of reading for a long time. So I'm just here to share with you some of my opinions about the books that I read. So the first one is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. So a couple of friends and I put together a book club that was designed for us to all have a similar book that we can come together and talk about. But it was also because we were forced to socially distance, it was a chance for us to have a community gathering once a month. I loved Scythe. It reminded me of everything that I loved about reading The Hunger Games and Divergent as a burgeoning young adult reader. It's about two young characters, Citra and Rowan, who are selected to become apprentices to the Scythedom. So in this world, humanity has kind of become its peak version of itself. And so there's no disease, there's no discrimination, and death is not marked by, you know, the end of a lifetime. It's selected randomly by these scythes who are, are gleaning, not killing, not murdering, but gleaning the population to maintain a balance in our globe. So I really, really enjoyed how this book wasn't afraid to explore differences in opinion. And it didn't explicitly call anything right or wrong, it just kind of put it out there and I loved it. So between Citra and Rowan's perspectives, we get Citra who's um, kind of trained to be a much more kind of merciful side, whereas Rowan who is kind of forced into this place to be a lot more ruthless and enjoy the exclusivity of this kind of killing club. And I loved that kind of variation. Rowan was by far my favorite character and between these two perspectives we also got little journal entries from various sides within the scythedom where we got to learn a lot more about the way that they think and the philosophy behind the ways that they decide to glean people. It was a really wonderful easy read a great way to start my reading this month. I gave it five stars and I stand by it. The next book I read was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel and I could not think of a more appropriate time to have started this novel. It's about a series of characters who we meet at various different points as a virus with flu-like symptoms comes and wipes out the majority of humanity and about the consequences before and after that pandemic occurs. Appropriate time to be reading this. Would not recommend it to anyone who's dealing with any kind of anxiety about the whole pandemic situation right now. I did not enjoy it for the majority of the time reading this book. The amount of perspectives that were there, like there was too many and they didn't connect in any way and it was just jumping here and there. I got really frustrated reading it, but it comes together so well. And there are some really wonderful moments of humanity within the story which is my favorite thing about reading um, any kind of book. I gave it four stars at the time. I would drop it down to three stars because I just don't think that how clever it was in the way that it came together can justify the frustrations that I had throughout the start of the novel and how it jumped around. Next, if you're on our Swell Book Club, you'll already know Patrick Ness is just like the best, the peak when it comes to writers, in my opinion. And so I've got my hands on an advanced copy of his novel, Burn, and I think it's my favorite Patrick Ness book. What I love about Patrick Ness is he doesn't shy away from raising minorities' voices. Our main character is a young girl. Her mother has passed away, who was a black woman, and her father's a white man in the late 1950s. So we get a combination of her role as a female, but also as someone who kind of doesn't really feel like she belongs to any background. She's fallen in love with a Japanese boy as well, so we get another perspective um, on racism and how that kind of follows through. We also get a young boy coming out as a gay man. So we've got three really wonderful representations of minorities. In addition 
we get dragons. So it's a win in any kind of way. And I don't really want to give much away from the plot because there are some wonderful twists and turns, some beautiful writing. It's five stars. I would give it six stars if I could. Go out, buy this book, read Patrick Ness. It's amazing. Next was Monuments by Will Kostakis. And Will, I actually met at Comic Con last year. So I've been wanting to read one of his books for quite a while now. But the reason I got this was Ellie bought it for me after I read Valentine by Jodie McAllister and fell in love with finally a really fun fantasy story, but set here in Australia. It's about a young boy called Connor. Um, he lives in Sydney and he gets swept up into this world of like gods and monsters. And it was, I'll be honest, I wasn't the biggest fan of the book. I gave it three stars and I stand by that, but it's an origin story. So I'm not going to judge it too harshly because I feel like we'll get a lot more action in the second book and that's what I'm really looking forward to. So congrats Will, I'm looking forward to reading the second one. The next was another recommendation from Ellie. It was The Siren by Kira Cass. So Kira Cass is one of Ellie's most favourite writers in the world. She's been like pleading me <laughs> to read the selection series but as I'm in the middle of quite a few other book series I've been wanting to finish those first before I start any new ones. So this was kind of a really lovely middle ground where I could discover Kira Cass's writing but not kind of commit to a long-term series. So this is a classic mermaid story of, you know, fantastical mermaid creature falls in love with a human and tries to save his life. So really, really simple story, really easy to read. There was actually some wonderful writing. The way that she personified the ocean in this book was just beautiful. I gave it four stars. I'd probably drop it to three stars in hindsight, but still very enjoyable read. The next was The Princess Bride. This was our debut selection for our Swell Book Club read. Now, I'm not gonna rant on about this. If you want to see me rant, here is a video in which I rant for 30 minutes about why I did not like this book. The characters were awful. The writing was appalling. I don't understand why this is given such a high rating. It's a one star. I wish I hadn't read it. That's how much I didn't like this book. Sorry to all you Princess Bride fans. Didn't enjoy it. The next was another Patrick Ness novel, and this is a series of short stories called Topics About Which I Know Nothing that I've been reading over the last three years. And it's been a book that I've kind of just picked up between other books and just read one short story at a time. Now this is not something I would like go out and recommend every reader to read. There are much better examples of Patrick Ness's writing, but if you are a fan of Patrick Ness. This is a really fascinating read because there are some short stories that are brilliant and there are some that I think aren't up to my kind of expectation of a Patrick Ness novel. But I loved, as a writer, it's fascinating to watch the development and seeing how he explores genres as someone who kind of doesn't really fit into a single genre and how his writing develops. I gave this four stars. In hindsight, I would give it three stars. Patrick Ness is still my god tier author and I will continue ranting on about how much I enjoy his writing until the day I die. Next was the first Percy Jackson novel, The Lightning Thief. So this is one that kind of came about in conversation from the rehearsals that I was doing where there was a debate over whether the film was in fact a good adaption or not. So I had watched the film, actually really enjoyed it. I felt like it was one of the better teen adventure fantasy stories that I've seen in a long time. I really, really loved the performances and the design and the story. The book is very much aimed for a much younger audience than myself as someone in my mid twenties. Like it was fine. I wasn't a massive fan of it. The movie took 
clear inspiration from this and the changes that were made had to be made in order for it to be a film. Sorry book fans, I think the movie was a wonderful adaption of the book. I have also bought the next two books in this series, which I realise kind of contradicts my point earlier <laughs> where I was like, I'm not going to start a new series. Uh, Percy Jackson, for those who don't know, we follow this boy, Percy Jackson, who discovers he is the son of Poseidon and we follow him on his adventures to save his mother's life. Really simple story, easy read. I gave it three stars and I stand by it. It's a fine introduction, but I'll be really interested as I kind of progress through the series to see how these characters kind of elaborate. I think that Percy and Annabeth are really wonderful counterparts and I'm excited to see how they develop throughout the story. The one thing that I think that the book had over the movie was the inclusion of Dionysus, which we did get Dionysus through the wonderful Stanley Tucci in the sequel film, but Dionysus' character is wonderful. And so I'm really looking forward to, as I read through the series, seeing more of that Greek mythology work at Sway in. Before I read this, whilst I've always been someone who has enjoyed Greek mythology, I was fortunate to have read Mythos by Stephen Fry beforehand. Um, this is a really entertaining way to educate yourself on the Greek stories because there's a lot of kind of secret stuff that's kind of scattered through this that is not obvious unless you're a hardcore Greek mythology fan. So this is, I feel like this is kind of almost a fan fiction, the way that it's scattered through. The audiobook of Mythos is a wonderful, wonderful read. So read that one first, enjoy the experience of reading that, and then I think it gives you a lot more insight into the clever parts of the writing of the Percy Jackson series. The next book I read, I think was my most disappointing read. No, no. Princess Bride was my most disappointing read, but this is not far behind it. It is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, and it is inspired by Agatha Christie for the modern reader, which it accomplishes. It accomplishes well. We wake up in the body of this gentleman. He doesn't know who he is, and throughout the events of the story, we discover that we're in this almost sci-fi world where he lives the same day over and over again for eight days, in the body of different people. And so his whole function is to try and discover who murdered this woman, Evelyn Hardcastle. It could have been phenomenal. I think that was the thing I was most disappointed in this, is that it had so much potential. The writing was fine. It was a very plot-based book, as are Agatha Christie novels, so I understand why that happened. The cast list of this book was so bloody big. At the start of the book, you get this invitation list, which lists some of the key players in the novel. And that is an essential part. I could not have gotten through this book if I did not understand who these characters were and their relationships to each other. This was our second book from our book club. And one of the girls actually wrote down through each chapter that she read her kind of observation. It's a very smart way to read this book. So I would recommend that in hindsight, having read this. It was just so convoluted and complicated. And if I wasn't reading it for my book club, I would have put it down a long, long time ago. However, I did mark out 60 pages before the end of the book. This book finishes so beautifully. For the most convoluted story, it brings together every single character in this cast of over 30 people and how they relate to each other so perfectly. In the book club, some people disagreed, but I think that the ending was the strength of this book. Now, in the epilogue, we get a excerpt from Turton where he explains that he wanted to give his readers the opportunity to have that Agatha Christie experience of trying to find who done it through clues that are left along the way. There's not great clues. I don't think that anyone could have picked the ending to this. Now, with that being said, it was a very plot driven book and I wish the characters were developed a little better. There's a lot of male characters in this that are very, very similar. So I wish there was a little bit more distinction between those characters. The female characters were just 
awful. With that being said, this is his debut novel and with any writer there's going to be a lot of learning hurdles along the way. So I am very interested in reading his up and coming books because of the way that he brought this together in the end. Now I gave it a two stars and I think I stand by that. It shouldn't take you nearly 80% of your reading experience to get to a point that you're genuinely invested in the story. But I'm really interested in seeing how this learning experience develops him and his writing style moving forward. And the last book of my reading journey was the sequel to Scythe, Thunderhead by Neil Shusterman. This book I feel did a really good job of not falling prey to what so many trilogies do where the sequel, like the second book in a trilogy, is just a joining puzzle piece connecting the good book of the first and the good book of the third. It stands alone and it stands quite strong. My favourite, favourite part about this, as I mentioned, Rowan was my favourite character and we get some fascinating philosophical discussions on the ethics of murder and who deserves to live um, through his journey as a scythe. I'm kind of bummed that Grayson's character kind of took over for the vast majority of the book from Rowan's perspective. I would have much preferred to have seen his perspective, but I loved how we got to see more of Scythe Rand, and I think based on the cover art, we're gonna get a lot more of her in the third and final book, so I'm really excited about that. The ending was a whirlwind, and I'm kind of, this part of me that's disappointed, because I loved the way it built up the international scope of the Scythedom and how it works and then kind of tore it down very instantaneously. But I understand why it had to be done and I want to reserve my kind of judgment on that until I finish the series. So I gave this a four out of five stars. I stand by that. Um, it was a really fun sequel read and I'm really looking forward to reading the rest of them. In the midst of all of these, I also read the Scott Pilgrim series. Um, with Ellie, which was a really fun experience. So Ellie had read the first two books in the Scott Pilgrim series and has been urging me to read them for a long time as someone who's a massive fan of Edgar Wright's film. I really enjoyed it, very entertaining, wonderful art, and it, we just sat together of an afternoon and just read through the books in like two hours together. Very, very easy read. If you've got like a Sunday afternoon free, just do it, read, especially if you're someone who's enjoyed the film. The first couple books you can see, it's it's like a storyboard for the film. That's how accurate it is and just made me appreciate the film more. I gave them a mixture between four and five stars depending on which book it was. The thing I really liked about Scott Pilgrim, yes, it's this fantastical, very funny, very entertaining story, but I feel like there is a large gap in the young adult market where the majority of the stories in young adult are 16 year olds, 18 year olds, going through school discovering themselves. But as someone who's been through the young adult um, and is going through a young adult phase in her life, there is so much more growing that happens once you leave the school environment. And that's what I loved about this book. It was Scott and his friends exploring themselves and trying to find their way in love and relationships as well, which is something that I can very much relate to as someone who's in that phase of her life. Am I going to be able to hold this? So that is all the books I read in my time in quarantine. As someone who's a very, very slow reader, it was really rewarding to see that accomplishment of 10 whole books. You know, a big part of these bookcases behind me that I had read in that time where I was able to focus a lot on my mental health and my creativity was quite revived. I hope you enjoyed this series of reviews. If you're interested in seeing more stuff like this, let us know below. If you're interested in supporting our work at Swell, like this video and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Go over to Facebook, give us a like. If you want to join our Swell book club, it's over on the Facebook page. And if you've got any kind of money spare and want to support our debut book, I Love You More Then, we would love to share this with you. It's a wonderful um, alternative to giving a card with lots of different phrases on the inside of the book that you can then customize to give to your loved one. I'll put all of these links down below so you can enjoy it. Thank you for watching my video and I will see you soon. Bye.